Florida, everyone. Hope you're all okay. Today is Tuesday, the 12th of May. Um, we read the first chapter in the prologue yesterday. I enjoyed reading your predictions. They were actually really, really good. Um, so well done. Today we're going to read chapter two of our book, The Beast of Buckingham Palace. So off we go. Chapter two is called Lionheart. Alfred was far from ordinary 12 year old boy, as you could imagine. Inside, he felt ordinary, but he'd been told time and time again by grown-ups that he was anything but. Alfred was not just plain old Alfred, he was Prince Alfred. His father was the king. One day, he himself would be crown king. King Alfred II, ruler of Britain and its people. The strange thing that, that he would become king of the kingdom he had never set foot in, not once had he been outside the Buckingham Palace. The boy's sad face could often be glimpsed at his bedroom window at the very top of the building. Above his window, a flag flew on the roof of the palace. For hundreds of years, it had been the Union Jack, the red, white and blue flag of the United Kingdom. Now, a very different flag flew, one that the Lord Protector himself had instigated. It was black flag with a golden griffin in its centre. This was a symbol of the new order of things. Britain now had no government, so no prime minister or politician represented the people. It had also had no police force. Instead, the king's personal army, the royal guards, enforced the rule of law. Buckingham Palace had been home to the British royal family for centuries, since George III, from his history books, Alfred had learned that he had become a royal residence way back in 1761. The palace used to be a sanctuary. Now it was a fortress. Members of the Royal Guard were stationed at along, along the perimeter wall. The soldiers were instantly recognisable by their long flowing red robes, hoods and horrifying gold skulls masks. On their arms, they wore black bands with a gold griffin at the centre, just like on the flag. Despite looking almost medieval, the Royal Guards were armed with laser guns. Just one zap was enough, enough to blast someone into oblivion. These soldiers guarded who, those who lived inside the Buckingham Palace. The palace had seen better days. The carpets were worn and the wallpaper was peeling off the walls. But it was still a special place. The prince's bedroom was furnished only with antiques. He slept on a four-poster bed in silk pyjamas, though the bed creaked and the pyjamas did have holes in them. The palace kitchen was stocked with every dish imaginable, as long as it came out of a tin. There were food stocks to last a hundred years or more. Alfred was safe inside the palace, or so he thought. The boy pressed his face closer to the window as, he, as the dome roof of St Paul's Cathedral caved in. Despite the horror, Alfred couldn't look away. Then, in an instant, he became distracted. There was a commotion in the corridor. He could hear a struggle and shouts just beyond his bedroom door. Oh, take your filthy hands off of me! How dare you! I am the Queen! It was his mother's voice. As fast as he could, which wasn't very fast, Alfred limped across the bedroom and opened the door. The Queen was being held roughly by two members of the Royal Guard. They were meant to protect the Royal Family. So why on earth were they dragging her along, along as if she was a criminal? These were strange times, but it was the strangest times of all. Mama! cried Alfred after her. The Queen was wearing her long late night dress and one slipper. Even though she was being manhandled, she was trying to maintain some sense of dignity. This was a lady who prided herself in never having her hair out of place. Alfred had not seen his mother without her hair um, in a perfect place. It, it was her special do, and her face painted with makeup. Right now, her do was unravelling fast. Instead of makeup on her face, it was covered with a thick night cream. She looked a sight. Alfred idolised his mother, and it was weird seeing her like this. Alfred! She shouted over her shoulder, struggling with the soldiers to make them stop. Because their faces were hidden behind gold skull masks, it was impossible to guess what they were thinking. The royal guards remained silent throughout, which only added to the sense that this was really a nightmare. Oh, Mama, where are they taking you? demanded Alfred. 
Get back inside your room, Alfred, and lock the door, she shouted back. But now, and I pr promise me you'll stay there. The boy did not reply. Promise, she pleaded. I, I, I promise, he mumbled. Shocked at what he just witnessed, Alfred retreated and slammed his bedroom door shut. He stood dead still, unable to move. It was as if he was underwater. That too made it feel like being in a nightmare. But this was no nightmare. This was really happening. And so if so, to prove that, tears welled in the boy's eyes, then streamed down his face. His mother, who, loved, who he loved more than anyone, was being dragged away in the night, and he was helpless to stop it. Alfred looked around his bedroom, where there were silver-framed photographs of her everywhere. So I'll show you this page. I'll just read a couple of these out, but I have put a photo on Scoop and um, Hub Files for you guys. So here she is reading him bedtime story. This one here. Um, there she was pushing him on a rocking horse. Here she was helping him draw a picture. Um, playing with a train set. Um, painting his face like a lion. Giving him a teddy bear and this one says, there she was helping him blow out all the candles on his birthday cake. In each picture, the young boy was basking in the glow of her love. In one of the photographs, Alfred was dressed up in a suit of armour as Richard the Lionheart. Richard I was a heroic king from the 12th century who led crusades in far off lands. Alfred picked up the picture and studied it. Lionheart. That was his mother's pet name for him. Tears welled in the boy's eyes. He always felt unworthy of that name. He felt nothing like a hero. Having been ill all his life, Alfred was used to being an object of pity. Sometimes he even pitied himself. Tears ran down his cheeks. He felt helpless to stop his mother being dragged away by the royal guards. Other important people had mysteriously disappeared in the night over the years. The Prime Minister, the Chief of Police, the Head of Army. Even Alfred's grandmother suffered the same fate, Lionheart. His mother's voice calling him that circled round and round in his head, Lionheart. Lionheart had been a mighty warrior. Alfred needed to s summon someone of his great, 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 great ancestor's spirit and do something, just anything. Lionheart, he said out loud, and despite what he had promised his mother, he opened his bedroom door. That's the end of chapter two, Lionheart. We will move on to chapter three tomorrow, Faceless Friends. Um, don't forget, pay attention to the riddle of the day. I had a few emails today of um, people's guesses, but this is a riddle, okay? So it's never just as straightforward as you think it will be. Um, so if you do think you know the answer, put it on discussions on Hub. I've opened a new discussions. Just um, put it there and I'll see if you can get it right. So riddle of the day. Take a good look. See you tomorrow. Bye.